Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Jeremiah chapter 51, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon. But she is not healed. Forsake her. And let us go every one into his own country, for her judgment reaches unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. So those of you who have come to the United States of America from various countries, I suggest you count your losses, empty your bank accounts, and leave. Unfortunately, because of the situation... With the medical devices that they are forcing on people, you probably cannot leave. Um, because I would not suggest that you allow yourselves to um, go through that. So, um, verse 11, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Now understand that Iran, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, all of those places are part of the kingdom of Persia, the Medes and the Persians. They have a connection with the Russians, which goes back through bloodlines way back. Now, I sat in the doctor's office, an eye doctor, some sort of medical place. I was had an appointment and listened to a man who was Persian explain the, this history. And I thought, praise the Lord. So when it says the kings of the Medes, no matter how you look at it, all of these verses throughout the Bible, Turkey, Russia... Iran, those places, those countries that you see named, they are all a part of this. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon, verse 12. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. It's already done. God's already made his decision. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. Well, we know that Iraq, where the Babylonian kingdom was, is in the desert. It is, does not sit upon many waters. We know that the book of Revelation says that the waters represents peoples, multitude of peoples, nations, tongues. So people of different nations, different ethnicities who speak different languages. Iraq is not a place that has many people from around the world living in it. Okay, so this is definitely speaking of America, which sits on the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Pacific Ocean. Okay. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shoot against thee. That's first um, 13 and 14. That tells me that it's lift. I'm going to fill you with people, men as caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shoot against thee. So that means those who are already in here. So, you know, he told them in the Old Testament, why did you let them come see all your treasures? They're going to come and rob you because the king was like, oh, look how beautiful everything in this guy has blessed us. And this Lord was so wonderful. They're not your friend. He said they're going to come back and there's going to be war. And I think of that verse all the time when we as Americans have allowed so many people to come into our nation, into our borders. Nevertheless, the Bible says that when you allow people to come into your borders, that you ought to treat them a certain way and do certain things for them. But we have oppressed the people. We have 
done so many evil things. Even the good things we quote unquote do that are supposedly good. There's lies and deception and cheating and prejudice and, um, you know, different things. You see how they turned those Haitians away? But you say you needed somebody to work those 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 docks. Now, of course, that was going to be a bit complicated, but it could be handled. It could be handled. You give them temporary visas and then send them back. And for some, you allow them to stay after you've checked and made sure they're not criminals and so on and so forth. And you make sure that you, you know, sort of keep track of who they are. They're watching everything anyway. <laughs> you might as well just give them cell phones because you're tracking everything anyway. That would be one way to keep to keep them tracked. But, you know, I mean, again, that's deceptive. You just give them temporary visas. And for those who work hard and do well and who you feel as though they deserve to be able to stay here, you let them stay. And you find housing for them where they can find housing for themselves. Or you work it out. I know that there's a way, especially if you have people in the office who are praying people who love the Lord God. But that's not the case. Verse 18, they are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Verse 24, and I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Now, Chaldea, Chaldeans is just speaking of sorcery and witchcraft which is a lot of that's going on in the United States, and it always has, even secretly. Behold, I am against thee, verse 25, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And there shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, that's Turkey. I told you that the Lord said, watch Turkey. That was 2009-11. The Lord said, watch Turkey. 12, it was years ago. Watch Turkey. Okay, I proclaim that. Those who know the Bible should have been able to know that up, oh, that's Ararat, because you would have done like I've done and looked up the word Ararat and saw that that was Turkey. And so when you hear prophets and things like that and speak things and you're testing the spirit because you know the word of God, you would know, okay, I believe him when he says that the Lord said to watch Turkey because Turkey is Ararat, and that's mentioned in Jeremiah 51. Against her, the kingdoms of Ararat, many, and Ashkenaz. You know Ashkenaz is Germany. Now, you also understand that the Anglo-Saxons are Germanic. And so they call themselves British, but they are Germanic. So that could also mean Britain. People will say, well, Britain would never do that. Okay, what about the so-called Illuminati? Are they not, were they not the Rothschilds? Were they not living in the city of London, which is in Great Britain? See, you got to sort of, instead of saying it couldn't be, you think, hmm, there are possibilities because A, B, and C, so maybe, and that may not even be the way it's going to happen, but that is at least a confirmation that it's possible. Prepare gangs for the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of, the, of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of, Ma of Babylon have forborne to fight, Forborn to fight, forborn, refused to fight. They have remained in their holds, hidden, hallelujah. They might have, their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at end and that the passages are stopped and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affright, affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. See, the daughter. Remember, Israel was called the sister of Sodom. See, Babylon, there was a lot of sorcery, sacrifice, to, to idol gods, idol worship, idolatry, worship of false gods, sorcery, sexual immorality, pride, wealth, vanity. So when it says the daughter of Babylon, it's speaking of a nation that has all of those things who sits on many waters. So you don't want to think that it's America. But it is. Hmm. <sighs> 
Her cities, 43, are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Baal and Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which hath, he hath swallowed up. And the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. See, nations, a nation on sitting on many waters where people from all over have flowed into it. A nation full of vanity and pride and wealth and selfishness and oppression and immorality. And idolatry. See, freedom of religion, idolatry, because you allow any and all sorts of worship of everything. Verse 46, and lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and the and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. You know that's Russia. At Babylon, as Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Because you do know that the blacks come from Israel. The Negroes are not Hamitic. We are Semitic people. Mixed with the Midianites, the Ammonites, the Moamites, the Egyptians, and so forth. But we are the seed of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. But you don't want to repent. You want to say, oh, slavery was so long ago and we had nothing to do with that. But the curse goes unto the third and fourth generation. So every generation that refuses to join together and gather and to worship and to fast and to pray and to say, oh God, forgive my ancestors. Oh God, forgive those in my bloodline. Oh God, forgive me. Oh God, forgive us, this country, for what we have done. Every time you refuse to do that, the curse is upon you. <laughs> upon us. And then you, a lot of white people, especially in the, in the South, you've got black ancestors and a lot of black people, especially south of Delaware, Hallelujah. You've got white ancestors. So it's all in the mix. None shall escape. No one is innocent. There's no one good except God. Mm. Because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, verse 55, and destroyed out of her the great voice, when her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered. Verse 58, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire. And they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded, Sariah. And I'm not going into that. Verse 64 And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far the words of Jeremiah. God bless you. Good abide. We'll do what it says. Jesus is Lord.